from sin now if we died with Christ we believe that we shall also live with him knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead dies no more death has no more dominion over him look at uh, we're at Romans chapter 6 and verse 10 so he says this for the death that he died he died to sin once and for all but the life that he lives he lives to God talk about Jesus now let's talk about you and Jesus look at verse 11 can we read it together Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, or Paul would say this, having said that, having said that, again, he's giving, he's giving boundaries for Christian living. Therefore, do not let, huh, come on, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust which again means that you can let it rain but you don't have to let it rain you're in more control than you think is that right do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead your members as instruments of righteousness to God look at verse 14 let's read it together for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under the law but you are under grace so you are under grace amen you're under grace and like I said somebody had come along and they had made some lifestyle choices as a believer and decided that they wanted to do that which Paul forbids and the Bible says not to do and so they were challenged by challenged by another believer saying you know I know how you live I know where you stand I know how strong you are in the things of God you've been to Bible college you know you really lived and lived clean for God and why is or how is it that you think that you can now live in this lifestyle and that's okay with God and their reply was this I can do it because I'm under grace that's what they said evidently they haven't read their Bible lately what does he say under grace what, was it, what did we just read what did we read verse 14 let's put it up there again for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under law but under grace and so he made it very, very clear. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body. You're under grace. So under grace does not mean that you now can let sin reign in your mortal body. Grace is, that's not the message of grace. Are you listening? Are you glad you're here still? I see half of you came back after last Sunday. That's what it is. <laughs> now I'm getting it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, uh, but you know, aren't you glad I'm still preaching it anyway? Look what Paul said again here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we're, we're again, we are going to advance beyond what I had preached to you last week. Uh, do, verse 24, he says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And anyone who competes for the prize is temperate, which means this. He exercises self-control in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. Let's read verse 27 together. This is the one that, that some folks gloss over. Hmm, all right, so let's just be straight with it, okay? What does it say in verse 27? But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself have become disqualified. In other words, I don't live a double life, Paul is saying. I don't go around telling you, you ought not to be doing this, but then yet I do these things. He says, I live my message, and I pass that on to you, because if I couldn't walk this thing out and live it, then why, who am I to preach it to you to try to get you to do it? Amen? 
And so he talks about self-control there. And we saw that list of things that had happened in chapter 10 and what happened to those in the Old Testament. And then Paul's exhorting, we, these things that they did that was not acceptable then, and he said this, he says, and it's not acceptable now. Now that you're under grace, you, you, under grace, you don't get a pass to say you can go do this now without consequences. That's not what the Word is saying. Amen? Did you know that as a Christian, as a child of God, you can choose to become a slave of sin? You can choose to yield your members or your body to things that the Bible refers to as forbidden? And guess what? Jesus still paid the price for those sins that you may do. But you know what? You open yourself up to the devil and you give the devil place in your life. And I want to warn you, he wants to kill you. He wants to kill you. His ultimate goal is this, to get you and to draw you away into sin. And then once he draws you away into sin, then he works on you concerning condemnation and shame and guilt and all of the things that goes with sin. What that does then is he starts working on you and your emotions saying, you know, how could God love you after that? and after this. So now he's getting you away from the love of God and that's why your faith works by love. What's that mean? Your faith works by the revelation of God's love for you. And if the devil can get you out there far enough, and then what happens is when people start engaging in things as a believer, touching the, unfor the, touching the forbidden thing, then what happens? Shame, they don't come to church. So then they get out there by themselves. And then the enemy says, you might as well just go for it. You have already blown it. Boom, boom, boom. Then he's working you again and working you again. And now your faith is not working. Your faith is not working because faith works by love. When I mean that, that by a revelation of God's love for you. Your faith works by that. It, that strengthens your faith. Amen. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. It's not that God is ticked up or disappointed or mad at you. What I'm trying to tell you is I'm warning you about the enemy of God and where he wants to get you to. You understand? He has a plan and a strategy. And uh, but again, this is why the love of God needs to be proclaimed continuously, and we need that assurance and reassurance of the love of Jesus Christ. You understand? Hello, I'm Pastor John Hagee. Israel needs our support like never before. Join us for the fourth Night to Honor Israel in Reno, Nevada, Sunday, March 22nd at 6 p.m. at the Atlantis Resort's Grand Ballroom. Tickets are just $18 and can be purchased at cufireno.com. Tickets are available by calling 775-827-0333 or visit cufireno.com. He does, Jesus holds no sin against you. He holds nothing against you. Jesus does not hold a thing against you. You know why he doesn't hold against you? Because in his mind, it doesn't exist because he washed it away and it's already done and finished. Amen. But the devil remembers and so do people. Amen. And so do you. And so the reality is, is that, like Paul said, stay in the boundaries that God has laid out. And he gives, perf he gives wonderful instructions. Are you receiving this this morning? So in closing, I want to close in Ephesians. We're going to go to Ephesians. We did not cover that last week. And this is so very, very important. All right. Remember, we saw over there in Romans chapter 6 where Paul said this. He talked about... The old man has been crucified. Is that right? Say old man. Amen. So you can look, wives, you can look at your husbands. Say old man, you're being crucified. And if you don't get crucified, I'll crucify you myself. If you don't get straightened up, boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> All right, look at here in Ephesians chapter uh, 4. Just a little history. Ephesians is six chapters. The first three chapters is spiritual application. It's all about what Jesus has done and what it means for you now and your position in him. And it's awesome and your inheritance and it's all good. Then the third, second three chapters is application of the first three. This is what you are. This is who you are. Now chapter four, five, and six, this is how you walk it out. This is what you do. These are the... This is the boundaries of function and operation as a believer, right? So look at what he does right here. Verse 17, he says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, 
that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened. We can put it this way. Don't, as a child of God, live as an unbeliever. You understand? You live as a child of God. You're not that same person anymore. That person is what? Dead. So, 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 so don't go there. He says, they have their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. What he is saying here is this. You can live your life if you want to. Wouldn't be wise to, but you can live your life in a way where you're alienated from the life of God. You disconnect. You unplug from the power source. Amen. It always amazes me how folks get distracted and the first thing that they throw away is church attendance. And they get off and, and they get this blessing and this job and all of this money, prosperity starts coming in and they don't have time for church. And then a year, come, late, late year goes by and I get a call for a counseling appointment. The good thing is, is they always say every time, I did not realize how much of an impact just going to church on Sunday was having on my life. And ever since, it didn't happen right away, but over a period of time, things started creeping in. And we just, that consciousness of God and that consciousness of Jesus and, and our responsibility as believers just began to fade away the more I was gone. And then what happened? Things of the world came in and took over. And here they had all these blessings. They're getting up testifying. Oh, the Lord blessed with my business. And, oh, and they're crying. And, oh, you know. and then you don't see them anymore afterwards. And prior to that, they were saying, God, Pastor Dave, pray for us. And we got this opportunity and pray. Let's get a group. And they get all these people praying. And wow, God answers the prayer. And now they got this blessing. Whoa. And then that's what happens. They, they, they alienate themselves from the life of God that comes by being plugged into a local church body. And then all this other stuff takes over. How many of y'all, you don't have to raise your hands, but you know on the inside, yes, I know I've been there. I <laughs> made that mistake. So again, Paul is saying here, look at, he says, who being past feelings, oh, wait, wait a minute, verse 18, he says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the what? The ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feelings have given themselves over to what? To lewdness. Do I need to define that for you? Have you all ever heard that word? Ooh, that's lewd. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness and greediness. He's talking to believers. He's saying, do you, you know what? That's not who you are anymore. You're in Christ. You're a new person now. You need to think differently. Look what he says this. But you have, look at verse 20. But you have not so learned Christ. In other words, Christ didn't teach you that. What is uh, Titus chapter 2 verse 11? It says, For the grace of God who brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching what? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. The grace of God did not teach you to do those things. You see what I'm saying? And that's what he's saying right here. But you have not so learned but Christ. In other words, grace has not taught you to do that, those things right? Grace didn't say to forsake all your values and morals, you know, and give yourself over to your flesh because you're under grace. Grace didn't teach you that. Hello. All right. So if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, Jesus and grace, as the truth is in what? It's in Jesus. That you, what? Come on, let's read it. Put off concerning the former conduct or lifestyle of the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind you need the word here is what's going to clean up your mind and it's going to show you and point you in the right direction and you're getting that today aren't you all right and he says be rooted in the spirit of your mind renewed that you what come on put on the new man which is created according to God in true righteousness and worldliness. Holiness. True righteousness and what? Holiness. True righteousness and holiness. Woo. 
And don't tell me I have to define to you what's holy and not holy. Come on now. You know. You know. Huh? Look at this. I said this to you. I said, you can get out there beyond that boundary of, of, of personal responsibility and conduct as a believer. You can go out of bounds. You can. God will let you go there. Amen? And he'll not, he will not condemn you for it. But you will, you will, over a period of time, if you keep on going and going, there will be a price to pay because here's why. Here's what Paul says. Verse 25, Therefore, putting away lying what is it, who is he talking to here born again children of God why is he saying put away lying because there's lying people be lying to each other he said, don't be lying to each other anymore stop it stop it say stop it that's right stop it therefore putting away lying let each one of you speak truth to his neighbor for we are members one of another verse 26 be angry and do not sin that's one of my favorite scriptures Come on, that's, that will set you free, man. There's something that's called righteous anger, amen? And yet without sin, amen? I can be angry at sin. I don't like sin. I hate sin. Ooh, that's right. Shouldn't use hate. I hate, hate the devil too, amen? But I don't hate people. I love people, and I love sinners, and I love Christians, and I love preachers, amen? And I love you all, amen? Hello, I'm Pastor John Hagee. Israel needs our support like never before. Join us for the fourth night to honor Israel in Reno, Nevada, Sunday, March 22nd at 6 p.m. at the Atlantis Resorts Grand Ballroom. Tickets are just $18 and can be purchased at cufireno.com. Tickets are available by calling 775-827-0333 or visit cufireno.com. Be angry and do not sin, and do not let the sun go down on your wrath or your anger. Verse 27, let's read it together. This is the biggie right here. Nor give place to the devil. Which means you can give place to him. If he says don't give place to the devil, which means you can give the devil place. That's why I'm saying. You stay, stay within the, 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 the play, play, play within the rules, you know what I'm saying? You can't play the game out, out of bounds and win the Super Bowl. Hello? Don't talk about Super Bowl to me right now. I'm mad. I'm mad, but it's not a sin mad. <laughs> Hello. All right. <laughs> okay, let's read some more. It says, nor give place to the devil. And we're just going to wrap it up right here. It says, and let him who what? Stole. St steal no more. No longer. But rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who is in need. Look at verse 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearer, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed. Sealed. Say, I am sealed for the day of redemption. Look at this. Might as well go on down. Verse 32. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor and evil speaking that word evil speaking in the Greek means this devil talk devil talk the devil has a language and he's telling the believers don't talk his language that means you can talk his language right so let's not do it he says and, and let that be put far away from you with all malice be kind to one another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you amen say I am sealed unto the day of redemption and even though you're sealed under the day of, the, of redemption you can go out and do all of these things of the flesh that he's talking about you can do it it's unhealthy for you and you give place to the devil and you give the devil access in your life amen but you don't have to you have that much control amen you are in control you have got power do you agree with that Praise God, it's 1210. That's my maximum, that's my limit. We do one hour and a half service. And we started at 20 minutes till, and it's 10 minutes after. I got my 90 minutes in. Are you listening? Somebody can say, well, Pastor Dad has long services. Did you know that years ago, every one of our services was two hours long? Not an hour, not an hour and a half. 
hour 40 miles. Everyone was two hours long. And we really worked at trying to keep it at two hours. So you know what? This is 30 minutes shorter than what we used to do. And folks didn't complain about it then except for the Catholics. Because they say, I go to church once a week, maybe. I went to church twice in one service. They only do one hour service, don't they? About that. Now, two hours, I remember somebody said that one time. That, you know, that, well, how long are your services? Well, you know, they're really, we keep, them, we keep it around two hours, you know. But we used to go to church, it was three and a half hours, four hours. But our church services are short, it's two hours. And they went, two hours? That's too long. Well, if you're in a dry, ritualistic, ceremonialistic service, I want you to know that an hour is too long. An hour is too long. I can tell you that one time I was sitting in that one of them services, man, and I was thinking to myself, how long have we been here? And I looked and it had only been like 20 minutes. I felt like we'd been in there for two hours. And by the time an hour was gone, I was drained. I'll say, I didn't, you know what? Wow. Made me want to go shorten my 90 minute services after that. So, that's, uh, I'm, it's actually 92 minutes now. This is 92 minutes. Stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. So here, let me conclude all of this with this. Who was it that gave us all those instructions right now concerning personal life and conduct? Who was it that wrote that? Paul. And who is Paul? The apostle of grace. What ministry did Jesus give him? He gave him the ministry to proclaim the gospel of the grace of God. So in grace... He has given us boundaries and guidelines of conduct as believers in this world. Do you receive it today? Amen. So when I go further into the message of grace, I wanted that foundation laid early on. Amen. Now we're going to get into the funner stuff. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Right? Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we praise you and we love you. Thank you again. That every one of us, even though we, if we've done any of the very things that Paul said, don't go there and do that, we still know we're sealed unto the day of redemption. Where our salvation is blessed and our salvation is secure. I want you to look at by here one more time. Last Sunday, I closed the service out by making a statement concerning the fact that Jesus won our salvation, and if he won our salvation, you can't lose what he has won. Do you remember I said that? I said, but there's a possibility people can forfeit a gain. Is that right? Well, the further light came to me after that. Amen. You know, and it's wonderful when you have Priscilla's and Aquila's and Priscilla's in your church. So anyway, one of our Aquilas and Priscilla's made a statement, and they said, you know what came to me, Pastor Dave, after you said that? That even if someone forfeits a game, let's say a playoff game like the Patriots and inflate a gate, huh? Remember the inflating thing that was really not legal? But let's just say they forfeit it, and they forfeit that victory, they lost that victory. The good news is this. They weren't kicked out of the league. They're still in the league. Still in the league. Isn't that great? So you won't lose your salvation. <laughs> you can, you'll certainly lose. You can lose a lot of things. Amen. You might even forfeit some things because of you're walking in a certain way. But thank God you don't get kicked out of the league. Why? Because you're sealed unto the day of redemption. That's good news, isn't that right? Right, Priscilla? God bless you. <laughs> Amen. So I just wanted to clarify that to you today. And I just thought that was revelation from the Holy Ghost. Did you receive it? So again, Lord, I pray a blessing over everyone here today. I look around the room, and I know everyone here has received Jesus as Lord and Savior. I pretty much know everybody here. And I just thank you for the salvation that we have and the blessing of that salvation. That no matter what we do, you'll never take away that salvation. We won't lose that salvation. But we know that the enemy still wants to rob us of things and he'll try to draw us away. But we know more, we know too much now. And we're not gonna let that happen. 
So I pray that the word that has been spoken this morning is as seed sown on good ground in the hearts and minds of all those that are present. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Say this with me. Thank you, Lord, for my salvation. And I stand secure in my salvation. I am sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, before we close out our program today, I want to give you an opportunity to make the most important decision that you will ever make in your lifetime. And that is to, to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says that Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And there's a scripture that says this, that there's no other name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved, and whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved will be saved. You have an opportunity right now to register your name in heaven. The Bible says that there is a book of life or the Lamb's book of life, and those whose names were found written in the book of life entered into heaven, for, but those who were not found uh, written in the Lamb's book of life were cast into outer darkness. They were sent to their eternal abode. Well, we don't want to go there. We want to go to heaven. And I'm sure that you can identify with that. So I encourage you right now to make that decision. Say yes to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior because there's no other Savior. There's no other Lord and there is no other way that you can have heaven as your home nor is there any other way that you can even have a relationship with God Almighty. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So pray this prayer right now. Say this out loud to the Lord. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. I confess that I am a sinner and I am in need of of a Savior. I recognize, God, that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. I believe with my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, I call upon you to save me now. I ask you to come into my heart make me a brand new person on the inside. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. See, if you've prayed that prayer, that very simple prayer, you basically prayed what the Scripture says. And God hears and answers your prayers. And if you prayed that prayer, you just received Jesus Christ. You just became born again in your spirit. We want to help you to grow spiritually. So let us know that you made that decision today and let us uh, send you some materials to help you to grow spiritually. But we need to hear from you. Send us an email or call us on the phone number right there, 827-0333. Once again, we want to say thank you for joining our broadcast and we'll see you next week. God bless you. Hello, I'm Pastor John Hagee. Israel needs our support like never before. Join us for the fourth night to honor Israel in Reno, Nevada. Sunday, March 22nd at 6 p.m. at the Atlantis Resorts Grand Ballroom. Tickets are just $18 and can be purchased at cufireno.com. Tickets are available by calling 775-827-0333 or visit cufireno.com. And beside the river Thank you for watching Demonstrations of Faith, a ministry outreach of Faith Alive Christian Center in Reno, Nevada. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and connect with us. We have ministry for the entire family on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Our Connect Youth Ministry meets on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Child care is available for all services. Our location is 120 Hubbard Way, half block east of the Pepper Mill in Reno. You can find us online at faithalive.net or by searching for Faith Alive at all social media outlets.
Thanks for watching and join us next week for Demonstrations of Faith. And it's flowing too.